bit like a ruinous spotlight. But anyhow, I'm glad you all came, because I've come here tonight to tell you the story of a wild ride down a mountainside by a man on a bike. It took place in the state of Victoria. That's that tiny little state shoved on the bottom of the great state of New South Wales. Victoria is very good for bicycling because you're never too far away from anything. You can ride across it in an afternoon, I'd reckon. So it's a great way to get around. The thing about Victoria is that they play a very unsavoury brand of football. Well, actually, it's a shamoddle that they call it football. And it's good that we contain that in a very, very small space, lest it get up here and contaminate proper folks like ourselves. But this uh, ride, getting back to the story, took place in the early 1800s. And, you know, a lot of our teachers were still very young in those days, about 200 years ago. So they could probably tell you that bicycles were a very fashionable thing around about that time, having just been discovered and invented. And everybody wanted to be seen in, around or on a bicycle. The man involved was Mulga Bill, who was a flash drover in the area of Eagle Hawk in Victoria. He was a champion horseman, as drovers generally are, but he also fancied himself to be pretty much a champion at everything. Kind of like myself, actually. But um, anyhow, all this story came about because he thought he could just pick up a bicycle and ride it pretty much like a horse, right straight away without any practice whatsoever. The yarn was written down for us by Banjo Patterson, and uh, I know you're going to enjoy it. But if you don't, well, I don't much care anyhow. It's uh, coming right at you. It's a rip snorter of a yarn, so we're going to get into it right away. It was Mulga Bill from Eagle Hawk who caught the cycling craze and turned aside the faithful horse that had served him many days. And dressed out in his cycling clothes, <laughs> resplendent to be seen, he hurried off to town and bought a shining new machine. As he wheeled it out the door with an air of lordly pride, the grinning shop assistant said, Excuse me, but can you ride? See here, young man, said Mulgaville. From Walgut to the sea, from Conroy's Gap to Castle Rock, there's none can ride like me. I'm good all round at everything, as everybody knows. Although I'm not the one to brag, I hate a man that blows, but riding is my special gift, my chiefest soul delight. Just ask a wild duck, can it swim, or a wild cat, can it fight? There's nothing clothed in hair or hide, nor built of flesh or steel. There's nothing walks or crawls or runs on axle, hoof or wheel, but what I'll sit while hide will hold and girth and straps are tight. I'll ride this here two-wheel concern right straight away at sight. It was Mulgaville from Eagle Hawk who sought his own abode, perched above the Dead Man's Creek along the mountain road. He turned the cycle down the hill and mounted for the fray, but ere he'd gone a dozen yards when it bolted clear away. It left the road and through the trees just like a silver streak, headed down the awful slope toward the Dead Man Creek. It shaved the stump by half an inch and dodged a big white box. The very wallaroos in fright went scrambling up the rocks. The wombats, hiding in their caves, dug deeper underground. And Mulga Bill, as white as chalk, sat tight to every bound. It struck a stone and gave a spring which cleared a fallen tree and raced beside the precipices close as close could be. And then as Mulga Bill let out one last despairing shriek, it gave a spring of 20 yards into the Dead Man Creek. It was Mulga Bill from Eagle Hawk who slowly swam ashore. He said, I've had some narrow shaves and lively rides before. I've rode a wild bull round a pen to win a five pound bet, but this was sure the darndest ride that I've encountered yet. I'll give that two-wheeled outlaw best. It's broken all my nerves to feel it plummet through the air and plunge and buck and swerve. It's safe at rest in Dead Man's Creek. We'll leave it lying still. An horse's back is good enough 
and fourth, Donald Guerrero. Thank you. Now pay attention to my, write down these notes. Please. 